Okay, question 11. The curve C has equation y equals 2x minus 8 root x plus 5, where x is greater than or equal to 0. Part A, find dy by dx, giving each term in its simplest form. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just I'm going to copy this down, but I'm actually going to simplify this. So I'm going to write it as y equals 2x minus 8 and instead of root x I'm going to write it as x to the power of a half plus 5. Now it's going to be a little bit easier to differentiate so dy by dx is going to equal 2 minus 4x to the negative a half plus 0 if you like. I'm just not going to write that down. So dy by dx is 2 minus 4x to the negative a half. It's a handy three marks. Next part. The point P on C has x coordinate equal to 1 quarter. Find the equation of the tangent to C at the point P, giving your answer in the form y equals ax plus b, where a and b are constants. All right, so the point P on C has x coordinate equal to a quarter. So if it has an x coordinate equal to a quarter, I would like to know what its y coordinate is. So I want to work out, let's just change color now. I would like to work out y when x is a quarter, when x is a quarter. So we get 2 times a quarter minus 8 times 1 quarter to the power of a half plus 5. 2 times a quarter is a half. The square root of a quarter is a half and negative 8 times a half is negative 4. I need to add 5 to that. So that's going to give me 1 and a half or 3 over 2. So in fact, P Let's write it down. P is actually the point um, 1 quarter and 3 over 2. So I've now got the point, And we're going to have to write the equation of the tangent. That's the equation of a line. And if I want to find the equation of a line, I need a point, which we've done. And I also need the gradient. And in order to get the gradient, we're going to use the gradient function which we worked out in part A. So what we're going to do is I'm going to evaluate dy by dx when x is equal to a quarter. So evaluate dy by dx when x is equal to a quarter. That's going to equal 2 minus 4 times 1 quarter to the power of negative a half, which is going to be 2 minus 4. Now let's see if we can figure this out in our heads. Because it's a negative power, we would flip it upside down, so we get 4 over 1. And then I need to take the square root of 4 over 1, which is going to be 2. So we get 2 minus 4 times 2, which is um, minus 8. 2 take away 8, negative 6. So the gradient is negative 6, and the point is 1 quarter and 3 over 2. So we're going to now use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where x1, y1 is this point up here, and m is negative 6. So we get y minus 3 over 2 equals negative 6 times x minus a quarter. Okay, let's see if we can tidy this guy up. So y minus 3 over 2 equals negative 6x plus and 6 quarters is the same as 3 over 2. Now we're going to add 3 over 2 to both sides, so we get y equals negative 6x. Adding 3 over 2 to 3 over 2 is 6 over 2, which is 
3. So y equals negative 6x plus 3. And let's just go back to the question and see if we've written it in the right form. y equals x plus b and a and b are constants. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, it says now that the tangent to c at the point q is parallel to the line with the equation 2x minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. Find the coordinates of q. So the tangent to c at the point q is parallel to this line. That means that they must share the same gradient. So if it's parallel, that means the gradients are the same. So let's take this 2x minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. And let's work out its gradient. So it's 2x, 2x minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. So I want to work out the gradient. So I'm going to get it in the form y equals mx plus c. I'm going to, let's see, um, I'm going to add the 3y to this side. So we get 2x plus 18 equals 3y. And let's divide both sides by 3. So we get y equals 2 over 3x plus 6. So the gradient is 2 over 3. The gradient is 2 over 3. Now, I'm looking to find the coordinate q. Well, that means the gradient function must also be 2 over 3 at some point. So the gradient, the gradient of this line equals 2 over 3. So I'm going to let the gradient function be equal to 2 over 3. A gradient function must at some point be equal to 2 over 3. The gradient function was 2 minus 4x to the negative a half. So 2 minus 4x to the negative 1 half must equal 2 over 3 at some point. Now what we're going to do is try and work out what the value of x is when this happens. Okay, the first thing to note, I don't like this x to the power of negative a half. I would like that to go away. So I'm going to multiply everything by x to the power of a half. So I'm going to multiply by x to the power of a half, and that will get rid of that bit. Let's just try that again. We're multiplying everything by x to the power of a half. Okay, so 2 x to the power of a half minus 4 because x to the power of negative a half times x to the power of a half is going to be 1. So minus 4 times 1 equals 2 over 3 times x to the power of a half. Let's try and collect our like terms together. So we get 2x to the power of a half minus 2 over 3x to the power of a half is going to equal 4. I'm going to factor out my x to the power of a half. So x to the power of a half into 2 minus 2 over 3. In fact, we don't even need to do that. 2 is the same as 6 over 3. 6 over 3, take away 2 over 3, is 4 over 3. So we get 4 over 3 times x to the power of a half must equal 4. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and then divide by 4. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So x to the power of a half equals 3, which implies that x must be 3 squared, which is 9. So x is 9. Now we know what x is. x is 9. We need to substitute that back in to the original function when x is 9. So we get 2x minus 8x to the power of a half plus 5. 
So just the original function was y equals 2x minus 8x to the power of a half plus 5, I think. Plus 5. Okay, so that's the original function. I know the value of x. I want to substitute it in to get y. So that means y will equal 2 times 9 minus 8 times 9 to the power of a half plus 5. 2 times 9 is 18. 9 to the power of a half is 3. 8 times 3, 24. Add that 5, so y is going to equal, let me see, negative 6 plus 5, negative 1. So that means that the point Q, it is indeed the point Q we're looking for. So Q must equal the point 9, negative 1.